we're back in the attic. So we got this water source heat pump. We actually have two of them. There's another one way over there. So this one um, runs for about five minutes and cuts off. It doesn't give me any error codes. So um, I left it overnight. Um, so it's currently in a lockout. You can tell that by the fast flash. That other one locked out too, but it runs a lot longer before it locks out. But that one actually gave me a high pressure. There's no strainers on these water lines. So um, we're gonna see if we can do a back flash, but basically I'm gonna have to remove uh, all the water lines. So that's gonna be interesting. So anyway, I'm gonna hook up gauges to this one just to see if it's a high pressure issue or maybe we have a board problem, uh, but I wanna be 100% sure before I open up these water lines. Uh, and then we'll go from there. So here we go. All right, so this is a carrier water source heat pump. So before we reset it, I want to see if it recorded any faults because I couldn't get it to record and show me any kind of fault whatsoever. I had a single flash, which is no fault in memory. Um, so the way we can pull that up is to do a recall. You see these two pins right here? It says test. I don't know if you see that right there. If you short those for, uh, I think it's five seconds, it'll start clicking. Um, it'll sh it'll start, you know, showing you the previous code. So right now it's telling me it's locked out. So let's go ahead and try and do this without shorting anything else. Here we go. Okay. So it didn't record anything. So we might have a bad board, but. Uh, or maybe it's a combination of there's something happening and it's just not able to show it to me. So we're gonna hook up gauges and see what it's doing. We're gonna use the probes just to minimize the amount of refrigerant loss possible and then we'll reset and I'll show you what this thing does. All right, so we got our gauges hooked up. This is the discharge line. That's back there is the suction, the true suction. Um, and then we have our two clamps on our water line. So generally we should be getting about eight to 10 degree differential between the two if it's working normally. If it's above 10 degrees then we have a water flow problem um, so we're gonna go ahead and kick it on I already killed the power so I'm gonna go ahead and flip it back on see what happens and then there is a delay before it comes on so we'll uh, wait till it comes on but, uh, you can see that light solid now that's how it should be all right she so just kicked on I'm just making sure I'm receiving a constant call we're watching our pressures our suction pressure is definitely low. Um, I've already put new filters in this guy. But the coil is pretty nasty. It's for restaurants, it's all covered in grease. If anything, it might be a low pressure trip. So receiving 24 volts. Just want to make sure I'm not like losing voltage or something. 21.7 on our suction pressure and 126.5 on our liquid. The blower motor is functional. Okay, so 22.4 and 122.7 pressures. Our temperature differential is less than 10 degrees, so yeah, we definitely got some issues. We've been receiving a call for heat the entire time. Okay, so um, FP1 and FP2, those are thermistors, so they're not an open, normally open, normally closed type switch like these. So they're detecting the temperature, so I'm, I, I think that this is what's tripping it. So anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and see if we can find any signs of refrigerant leaks so we can fix it. And then uh, if not, uh, I don't know, I think we're going to charge it up just to get them by for now. We'll see. Okay, so we got our T installed back there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and charge refrigerant in here. Um, so I talked to our client and basically this is what they want. They want me to charge it up and put dye in it. So. Yeah, honestly, I told them this thing needs to be replaced. It's old, it's beat up, and it's time, but this is what they want to do, so this is what we're doing. I don't necessarily agree with it. I don't like the idea of putting dye in a small system like this, but no choice. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and kick her on, and we'll charge refrigerant into it. I figure it's probably going to take like a few ounces, um, and then we'll go from there. So we'll be controlling how much refrigerant goes in through that... Uh, valve over there. I have to stick my hand in there. Uh, it was pretty low. We actually got about a pound in it. Uh, these are our pressures now. Keep in mind the uh, superheat and subcooled is not accurate. 
So this is our suction pressure, 62. Liquid's at 222. Um, this temperature here, it's 75 and 65. That's our water temperature, so exactly 10 degrees. So we're back up and running. Uh, she's been running now for about five minutes straight. So we're going to let her run. We're going to go take a look at that other one and see what's up with that one. So I think we're good on this one. Then we got to inject some dye into it, which is not going to be fun. So yeah. Yeah, so this one is crazy. It started working fine for a while, but then in cooling mode, it, it tripped the freeze protection. So um, the coil, I mean, I got low suction because that coil is just completely plugged. The only way to clean it is to take this entire duct apart. Um, so I'm gonna quote them for that, but realistically, they should probably replace this unit. So anyway, uh, hopefully this helps you out. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment to me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.